Flylevin trying to harness his enthusiasm. He's stalking the mound. He knows what he has. He's never been here before in this type of situation. Has his own destiny as control, and he's going for it. It is a cool, crisp night here in Cincinnati. You can feel the excitement as we get ready for this championship series. Entering 1979, the Reds and Pirates had met three times in the NLCS in the 70s, since he had won each time. That rivalry was just like two bull moose rams pounding at each other. Rams raise up and they go bang. They go the Reds and the Pirates going at it again. And in the 11th inning of game one, Stargell struck the first big blow. A high, deep drive, hit back into deep right center, and it's going to be out of here for a three-run home run. Well, it was a clutch hitter. I know Tom Hume couldn't get him out. Every time he faced Tom Hume, he took him deep. Willie Stargell explodes one out of here to deep right center field. The Pittsburgh Pirates jump out in front five to two. The next night, it was Dave Parker's turn as the game again went to extra innings, and again, a big pirate bat looked to come through in a big spot. You look down the bench and you look and see who you, who's gonna win the ball game for us, and two guys we look for, Willie Starr, you look for Dave Parker. There it is, left field, base hit, Moreno rounds third, here comes the goal, and it's not in time. Thanks to the clutch performances of their big guns, the Pirates had taken two in Cincinnati, setting the stage for a sweep. Parker makes the catch, and the Pittsburgh Pirates in 10 innings defeat the Cincinnati Reds by the score of 3-2. to two. And Burt Flylevin is running to the mound. He'll be getting in his warm-up passes to do his battery made at hot. That infield's going to be throwing the ball around. Stargell and Garner on the right side, Foley and Madlock on the left. The outfield of Milner, Moreno, and Parker left to right. The coaches for Cincinnati have taken their places. Rutz Nixon at third, Ron Plazas at first, and as the Dutchman kicks the dirt away, some people see that happen, probably don't realize that ground crew fills it in, Nelly, and as a starting pitcher, you'd like to get it just the way you want it. Well, they certainly do, and the ground crew, as they do fill that in very flat with the with the uh, rubber, it uh, you need that hole, and if it's slick right against the rubber, you can slip. All right, we're gonna look at him on the field up close. Willie Stargell at first base, number eight. The captain of the Bucks, whose home run won the opening game in the 11th inning. Dave Collins will be leading it off. He is three for ten in this series, driven in one run. The year 38. See Collins 318 as a switch hitter. And we are ready for the opening pitch of the third game, and here it comes, and it's fouled off. We're underway. Strike one to Collins will be followed by Morgan and then Concepcion. One two from the Dutchman. Hey brother. Right now Blylevin and not wish the guy with the mask and the blue suit would widen his strike zone. Joe Morgan is the on deck hitter. Dutch got a big chew going today. Bouncer Garner. Second to first will do it. The first out has been recorded. Collins out, second to first. Phil Garner to Willie Stargell. And there's old Scraps at his best year, and he makes the throw on the first out of the game. Joe Morgan has gone 0 for 7. He did not have a typical Joe Morgan year, but maybe Father Time took a little bit of that toll, plus some nagging injuries. Hit 250, nine homers, 32 runs batted in. One and two to Morgan. There's a high fly ball down the right side. Stargell, Garner, Parker. Who's going to have the right away? The captain does. Backpedaling near the line, and it's two away. Stargell went a pretty good distance for that ball. Well, he certainly did, and as he was going down, Garner was saying, well, I've got it. But big boy, if you want to come back and take it yourself, you've got all the room in the world. Willie backing up and making an easy play. All right, Dave Concepcion, the shortstop, will be coming out. He is four for ten in this series for the year. Had an excellent year. Everybody knows how he can play with a glove and with that great arm at short, but he contributed a lot with his bat. He drove in 84 runs. He had 16 homers, 281 average, scored 91 times.
the big bender out of the zone that time and it's one ball and no strikes Foster would be next opening inning by 11 against Concepcion with nobody on and two down popped one in there that time well he's going right for the Spalding guide here today isn't he throwing all the different speeds changing a little moving it around and it is one and two that's that unhittable curveball if he has it working it's it's almost impossible to hit when he keeps it down on the strike zone two two and a liner into left center for a base hit got that ball up for Concepcion and he just swung right where it was well he tried to come back change speed and throw that change up but like any other pitch if you get it up and over the plate the hitter is able to adjust with it and being the good hitter the Concepcion is started to commit himself and then kept his bat back able to stay with it and hit a line drive up the middle. So the first hit of the game recorded as Milner threw it back in. Concepcion getting his fifth hit. That's the most in the series so far. Foley leads our club with four. George Foster the batter. Bouncer deep short. It'll take a great play and they do it at second on a force. Beautifully done by Foley and it's a Foley Toledo at Pittsburgh. Going way into the hole. Firing to a stretching garner. A fantastic play and the side has been retired. For the visiting Reds, no runs, one hit, no errors. They leave a man and our battle and bucks. The champs of the East are just now coming into bat. All right, as Mike Lacoste warms it up in the center of the diamond, we'll place his teammates on the field for you and look at the Cincinnati defense for this one. And we'll go to first base for number 22, Dan Dreesen. Joe Morgan, number eight at second. 13 is Davey Concepcion playing shortstop. Ray Knight, 25 at third. Their outfield shows Cesar Geronimo, number 20 in center. Flanked by 15, George Foster in left, and Dave Collins, 29 in right. And the battery mate for Lacoste, is bench number five and Lacoste wears number 51. Lacoste is a very fierce competitor. It might be that he'd be pressing a little here today after the second half that he had. And I know early in the year when a couple of things went wrong against us, almost lost his cool out there. He doesn't like bad calls, especially on ball and strike calls. And if a play happens in the field seems to upset him. This is no day for him to have one of those tantrums. Well, it certainly isn't. You hope that the last part of the season taught him, taught him a little bit about a battling back and going through some rough spots. And then the Cincinnati Reds hope that he has matured and can handle his first championship game. We might see something going on here that uh, we are not fully aware of, Nelson Bryles. And that is, well, time's just been called here. Morgan digging some dirt out of his spikes. Lacoste may have had some trouble warming up because Freddie Norman is already throwing in their bullpen. All right, Omar Moreno, three for ten in the series. Takes a ball. Bench looks right back as much as to say, are you kidding me? Bench right there trying to stick up for his young right pitcher, right? Certainly did, and, and the ball looked like it was a pretty good pitch, and, and I'm sure he turned around and said, how can you miss the first pitch of the game when my pitcher's on the mound? There's Norman that I was talking about already loosening might be something going on with this right hander fouled off or it might be this if he got off to a slow start and McNamara's back is to the wall and with Parker Stargell and Milner in the three four five he may want a left hander ready in case we start something in a hurry McNamara has no room he cannot afford to go with anybody he has to win today there's no tomorrow oh boy that didn't miss by much either. Two and two. Omar had the good eye that time. That's a good hard sinker that we were talking about from Lacoste. You're probably going to see quite a few of those pitches today. Oh, that almost took his batting gloves off. Omar started to go out there and get a pitch, and he didn't have to go too far because it was right at the inside part of his <laughs> blouse. And that's going to fill it. Here it is. Watch this bear in on him here. There it is. Don't commit too early, Omar. You might have to get out of the road. A payoff is due. The fans are clamoring for a base runner. They just got one. Moreno is on with a leadoff walk. And by fouling him off, 
and making Lacoste continue to thread the needle worked him for the base on balls. He certainly did, and that's exactly what John McNamara does not want. He wants the team to help, and when the starting pitcher walks the opening man of the ball game, you're asking for a lot of trouble. Especially with the base-stealing champ at first base. And about as good a number two hitter as there is in the business getting ready to step in and bowling. Certainly got a lot of recognition, maybe MVP uh, candidate for this series. The recognition that he sought for in his 10-year career, I think, is finally coming to him. All right, Moreno with the lead. Let's see if they put something on in a hurry. Just a lob over. He's got a better move than that. Yes, he does, trying to set Omar up a little bit. Uh, first of all, just let him know he's there, but he's trying to set him up for that good, quick move to first. Foley is four for eight in this series, two RBIs. Crowd wants Moreno to run. He's going to. Bench's throw will never be in time. It's a stolen base for the Antelope. Here it is again. But Moreno clearly stole it on the pitcher. He certainly did. That nice slow turn. Bench comes out and makes a pretty good throw, but the speed of Omar beats the play easily. Even if the throw had been on the other side of the bag, Mo Omar just turned it on, gives it a Superman slide, is in there easily. Concepcion went out to get the ball. He can't ever bring it back in time going out to reach that bar for him. So we got a runner in scoring position. Now Foley with the opportunity to get him over to third for the Cobra, who is in the on-deck circle off to the right side. Bunts at first base side. It'll bend off the line foul, and the count will even at one and one. So Moreno retracing his steps, going from third back towards second. And here it is again. He bunts it. He deadens the ball all right, but he just got it too close to the line, and it wouldn't stay fair for him. Well, he didn't. When you're trying to sacrifice, you don't have to try and get it really close to the line. You just want to make sure you get it down, know the first baseman, and how he can field and throw. If you just get it down with it deadening it a little bit, it would be successful. And he also knows he's got a right-hand throwing first baseman. He's going to have to turn if he gets it down to him in order to throw Moreno out. A bouncer towards short. Throwing to third. Bad throw. Safe everywhere. Concepcion turned to play on Moreno, but he threw the ball too high. Knight had to go up and get it. Couldn't come down to make a tag. And it's safe at first and third. Concepcion trying to throw on the run and lob it over Moreno's head. Got the ball up way too high. Omar safe at third, taking Knight out on the play. And on and on the play, fully safe at first. But we see Omar going in. Whap takes his legs right out from underneath him. And here it is again. Now Moreno was running immediately. I got to believe a good throw would have been bang, bang. It would have been very, very close. And Omar went to third only because it was a slowly hit ball. And Concepcion was pulled up a little bit with Foley hitting, but just uh, made a bad play. I don't know if a good throw even gets him in. Omar had a pretty good jump on the ball. He was running immediately. All right, runners on the corners for Parker. So a walk, a stolen base, and a fielder's choice have put the Pirates in business in the opening inning. And here's our leading hitter, Parker. 310 against the Reds this year hit three homers in this series he has had three for nine and driven in a run he drove in the winning run in the Wednesday game one ball no strikes Norman continues to throw in the Cincinnati bullpen down in the right field corner a fly ball with any depth can get Moreno home he's only about 85 feet away right now Foley's at first, one ball, no strikes. A big rip, foul tip, one ball, one strike. Fly ball, left field. Foster is there. Remember, he got a speed march in at third. They'll send him home. The throw will be late, and it is one, two, nothing. Pirates. Moreno has scored. Sacrifice fly and an RBI. Now that was hit about going to look at it he's about 280 feet down the line he was and without without Foster being able to get behind the ball and get enough momentum to come into the ball and make a throw he had to almost make it flat footed and with the speed of Omar he beats the play here it is again he just didn't get much on it either kind of dribbled in the bench and Captain Willie is 
you would expect. Gets a great hand here. A love affair with a city and an athlete. Right here with Stargell and the Buck Rooters. And that's a ball to the captain, who is three for seven in this series, including the big home run with two on that won the opening game. He hit two of his home runs this year in a total of 32 against the Reds, drove in 82 runs, ended up hitting 281. Foley's at first with one out. The Pirates lead one to nothing. Crowds him, two balls, no strikes. The 2-1 to the captain. Center, it'll be easily playable by Geronimo. Just didn't get under that ball enough. Hit it on the button, but right at the center fielder. Well, he did. Willie got a pitch that he liked. Just wasn't quite able to get his hands completely through the ball. Hit the ball pretty well, but dead at the center fielder. So Tim Foley still at first base. Concepcion, the shortstop, who made a play that certainly helped the Bucks in this inning. And you can see that it's not a typical <laughs> summertime game here today. A little heavier clothing feels good. Milner 0 for 7 in the series. Ball one. Milner with a 276 season average, 16 homers and 60 ribbies, and he hit two home runs during the regular year against the Cincinnati staff. Foley at first, two down, a run is in. Opening inning, third game of the championship series. Well, he's really trying to work that outside corner to Milner. It hadn't been able to get that call. And Foley, who reached on a fielder's choice, standing by Dreesen at first base. Ball three. All right. There's the old group. I must be there somewhere. I'm hiding behind the TV set. There I am. <laughs> Three balls and no strikes. Foley edging but not going. Ball four. Second walk of the inning. Johnny Bench as Milner reaches first with coach Al Monchek. Bench wants to talk to the young right-hander. He was doing it, uh, taking advantage of the time that he was digging the dirt out of his spikes, and here's the mad dog. Boy, did he come on with a rush. Did so many things other than swing a bat that everybody knows is potent. The last month, played some great third base, stole some big bases. He has, and, and is, what he has done to our ball club is what they got him for. He took a lot of pressure off our left-handed hitters. We used to see a lot of left-handed pitchers. You're looking at one right there in Freddie Norman. Now it doesn't matter. Left or right, we got some poison for you either side. Matlock finished at 298 and takes a ball. 14 homers and 85 ribbies. The RBI column was the highest of a career that's been a good one with the Cubs and Giants. Bill Fisher, the pitching coach, along with Tom Seaver. Ball two. Two on, two out, a run in. 2-0 to the Mad Dog. Ball three. Lacoste may be digging himself a hole that he can't climb out of. And Norman. He's warm. It's just a matter of when do they want him. Ball four. The bases are loaded with Pirates. And we haven't had a hit yet. That's the third walk of the inning. A fielder's choice. A stolen base. Somebody thinks the Bucks are number one, huh? He represents the whole crowd. That guy. <laughs> McNamara surprised me here. I thought with the importance of this game and the position that the Reds are in, if he lost Madlock, we'd see Norman facing Ott. Now Ott, who's been swinging a very good bat the last two weeks, has a chance to really give Bly Levin some breathing room. Certainly does. A base, open, base hit here can break the game open for us. Fouled on the screen, strike one. Ott hit 273, seven homers and 51 ribbies came along this year is a good sound big league catcher and the buck brigade is here they don't miss many 
I think everybody that brought a banner this year brought him back for the playoffs. Bucks are trying to add to that one run lead right here. High fly ball left field. Foster drifting back. He'll go onto the track. That's where he'll catch it. And the side has been retired. So Lacoste got out of it in pretty good shape for all the trouble he had. Pirates get one run without a hit. There weren't any errors. There were three walks. And three Pirates were left. So we have played an inning. Milo Hamilton and Nelson Bryles with Pirate TV in the playoff championship series from Three Rivers today. And after the first inning, as Blylevin heads to the hill, he's got this lead. Pirates one, Reds nothing. As we go to the second, Johnny Bench, Dan Dreesen, and Ray Knight are due against Blylevin. Bench at 276 during the regular season, 22 homers and 80 RBIs. Bench in this series is two for eight, and in late innings of the first two victories for the Bucks, got bench when we needed to get him. Broken bat sounded like left center still went quite a ways. Moreno's going to make the play, and it's one away. I'm going to tell you something. I'm glad the bat cracked. If it went that far with a bat that didn't hold up, he might have gotten that all, but the bat didn't handle it. And I tell you, with the with the cooler weather today, as Omar Moreno goes over, backed up by John Miller making the catch, it's going to be a little colder on those hands today, and it'll be a little tougher to get those hands coordinated and popping the bat. The temperature's dropped here somewhat, so there might be a few bees in the handle today if Bylevin can get the ball inside. Dan Dreesen, one for eight in the series, hit 250 for the year. Liner right at scraps. He picked it clean. He looked right at the umpire to see, and he said, yep, you got it. So that is a line drive to Garner, and Dreesen is out. Scraps went right down on the artificial surface here to keep that one right in his glove. And this is Ray Knight, the fine rookie third baseman. He can take a major bit of the credit for getting them here because if he fails in the spot that they put him on when Rose left, they're not playing in this series. He had to not only do it offensively, he had to also do it defensively at third base, and he responded very well. In this series, he's two for ten. For the year, he ended up hitting 318. He was their leading regular. Lined it to left, and that will drop in and go by Milner up against the fence and come back on the track. That ball was hit so hard it act actually hooked away from Milner. I think when he came over it looked for a moment like maybe it was a little in between then thought he was going to play it on the first bounce but that ball was hit hard and just simply zipped right by him. Well it was and we have to take one in thing into consideration today that a player can an outfielder can almost commit himself but then keeping in the back of his mind that it is so slick today in that outfield that even if he lays back and short hops the ball his chances of catching it are slim so go ahead and try and and make a wild scoop. It's only going to be a double anyway, as John knows. Picks the ball up, throws it in, and indeed, it's only a double. And we're only in the second inning. Geronimo 0 for 3. Hit 239 for the year. Hit four homers, drove in 38 runs. During the year, Pirate pitching did a good job on him. Held him to five hits and 30 at bats. And he's gone 0 for 3 in the one game that he played in this series. Ball one. Geronimo it doesn't look like it but he has good power when he gets his pitch to hit and he's a cripple shooter you get behind him and throw him a, a hanging curveball or an off speed fastball and he can definitely hurt you with it and they've got a tying runner in scoring position in Knight, who doubled with two away there's a fly ball out into right center it's going to hang up long enough for Parker to get to on the edge of the track and the side has been retired Geronimo gave that ball a pretty good ride but it got up in the air and died here. Parker was able to get right back to it, made an easy play. It's no runs and one hit, no errors. The doubling night was left. We played an inning and a half. Game three in the championship series. Pirates one, Reds nothing. As we go to the bottom of the second, Lacoste will look at Garner, Blylevin, and Moreno, and this is it for the fans at home. Alfred R. Melzer, M-E-L-Z-E-R of Pittsburgh. He's going to play Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes here, and... Mr. Melzer, you can root the Bucks home here during the bottom of the second. If a home run is hit by a pirate, you're going to win $700 worth of Giant Eagle groceries. We passed out a few groceries this year, haven't we? Well, we've had, we've had some good jackpots, some good winners, and I, I tell you, the home runs have all come at very opportune times, so it's made everybody happy. Here's Phil Garner. 
at 293 for the year. There's Garner's gang. The Garner gang banner and the big red mustache and Yosemite Sam. They're all his. There's a line drive single into right field. That ball got through Collins. Garner's headed for second. He's going to try for three. He's digging. He'll make it without a play on him. Scrap iron is in at third. Garner with that play in front of him. The minute he saw that ball go by Collins, he knew he had a chance to get to third. Certainly did, and just as Collins misplayed a ball in Cincinnati with a wet turf, he also does it here on a wet turf, not allowing enough room for that ball to bounce out in front and play him because it's so quick, ends up on third base with nobody out. And that is scored as a triple. It's the Pirates' first hit. Blylevin got a chance to bring him home and add to the ante here. Comebacker won't get him home with that. So the throw from Lacoste to Dreesen and Blylevin is out. He hit the ball hard, but right back to the pitcher. Good reaction by Lacoste. Catches the ball and checks the runner, first of all, so that he knows right where he is. If he makes the mistake of breaking home, he's got him dead to rights. He turns, catches the ball, checks him. Garner goes all the way back to third. Then he turns and nails Blylevin. Good reaction by Lacoste. You know, there's a play that I... There's Norman already throwing again. He's thrown as many pitches as Lacoste has. You know, as sharply as that ball is hit, you know how some pitchers fake with runners at first and third when they're pitching and act like going to throw to third and then throw to first? Almost the reverse would be worth the gamble there because even if you turn twice, you know you'd have a chance to still get the runner. If you acted like you were going to go right and didn't bluff him back and then whirled, even if you look back and he didn't go for the bait, you'd still have time to get the runner at first. You can, and with the pitcher... Running it, it's very possible, but in a in a championship series, usually you don't try and get too fancy. And another ball to Omar, who walked in the first inning, stole a base and scored. And Omar's amigos are here today. <laughs> this is great. Johnny McNamara showing some concern. He's probably looking at some charts right there because he wasn't looking at the action. Ball three. Moreno is batting for Alfred R. Melzer of Pittsburgh as we play Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes. Infield up there right into that line that points it out to you on the artificial surface. Three balls, no strikes. He walked in for the second time, and that's walk number four given up by Lacoste. Tim Foley will be the batter as Moreno reaches first again. There's Joe Lynette, our third base coach, the old Beaver man, talking to Phil Garner at third. They may be buying some more time here, though. I would think that if they were going to make a change, it might not be here with Foley as a right-hand batter. They might hope that uh, he could get Foley to hit into a double play and get out of an inning or at least get him one way or another and then maybe bring on the left-hander because after Foley it's Parker Stargell and Milner all batting left-handed. There's a fly ball to center that should be deep enough to get scraps home. Geronimo is there. They'll concede the run I would think. He can't throw him out from there. Never could. Sacrifice fly and an RBI for Foley who gets his third Run batted in of this series. And the reception committee there, and there are some happy Pirate fans. So Tim Foley, and as Nellie Brown suggested, first time he came up today, he's trying to make a bid for that MVP trophy. Played the good shortstop. He's had four hits, and he's driven in three runs. Parker, the batter, he got a run home in the first inning with a sacrifice fly. The Pirates leading now two to nothing. Not close at first. Giant Eagle contestant with a bona fide home run hitter up there. Now Parker is Alfred R. Melzer of Pittsburgh. $700 worth of Giant Eagle groceries riding. Throw over. Whoa! 
Dreesen really had to dive across Omar to keep that one from going down the line. Trying to bother Lacoste to throw over, and he has to dive over him again. This kind of a situation has got to help Parker. Here's the throw over again. Not really that good a move. He's just trying to keep him close over there, but I can't understand why he's throwing that ball that badly because he's not really trying the pickoff move. Still no count to Parker. Moreno edging, not going. Ball, 1-0. Isn't this a chance for Parker to really gamble and guess fastball as much as he seems to be thinking about Moreno? Well, definitely, because Lacoste is even having trouble throwing his fastball over, and if there's one pitch he's trying to throw over, it's going to be the number one. Now it's ball two. And uh, Johnny McNamara has seen enough. The first-year manager, not in the big leagues, but of the Reds, is on his way, and he's going to pick up Johnny Bench on his journey. They are headed to the hill. Lacoste has struggled from the opening pitch when he walked Moreno. Same inning he walked Milner and Madlock. Gave up a triple to Garner to start this inning. Walked Moreno again. And Lacoste is through. So Freddie Norman, who did not figure to get a start in this championship series, designated as their long man today, and he's coming on in a hurry. See him trucking on into the mound, inheriting a semi-jam situation, and he's behind 2-0 on Parker, so he definitely has his work cut out for him. He has to really come in and throw strikes. Parker, the batter with the 2-0 count, got a run home in the first with a sacrifice fly. Foley got a run home in this inning with a sacrifice fly. Moreno scored run number one, Garner number two. Two balls and a strike to the Cobra. Stargell on deck. Then it'll be Milner. Two away in the inning. There's a high foul fly. Looks like it'll bend over to the left. Third baseman Knight will look at it, but it's up about ten rows. And it holds at two and two. You talk about the difference on the mound. Mike Lacoste was 6'4", weighed 190. Freddie Norman is 5'8", so you know Freddie's not going to be stretching out where the 6'4 man did. Three and two to the Cobra. Captain Willie do up next. All right, let's see. He'll be going here naturally, two out in the full count. There goes Omar. Swing and a miss. So Norman comes in and strikes out Parker. Have to settle for one run. On one hit, a leadoff triple by Garner. Foley got him home with a sacrifice fly. There was a walk and one man left. We've played through two. We'll go to the third, and their second pitcher, Norman, who came on and struck out Parker, will be leading it off. Bullseye. Yeah, he had him measured, all right. Brings him up. Strikeout number one for the Dutchman. Bucks are playing in their good luck uniforms here today, too. They've done well at home this year in the pinstripe. Here is Collins, the right fielder. In the first inning, he bounced to Garner. So he's up here 0 for 1. We're in the top of the third inning. The Pirates have scored two runs on only one hit and lead two to nothing. Strike one. The Reds have two hits. Concepcion in the first, Knight in the second. Shortstop. Oh, couldn't get the glove down. Scooted right under it. So Collins is on, and he is a speedster. See how they're going to score that. Looked like he got to it, but didn't get the glove down. Yeah, he came up, just kept the glove up a little bit. As you can see, the water coming off the ball, giving an indication of how wet that outfield is. They gave it, they scored it a base hit, Milo, but it just seemed that the ball skipping on that water, Tim was trying to judge the bounce, and as it got to him, the ball stayed down a little bit, and Tim didn't get down with it. Joe Morgan, the batter. Now with a two to nothing ball game, let's see what they do with Collins. Pirates are out in front. They now have three hits compared to one for the Bucks. He's not going anywhere there, and Morgan hits one a mile in the air down toward their bullpen area. Bouncer right side, Stargell right there. No play at second. He just took a quick look. Got the sure one then at first. 
So Morgan is out. Stargell unassisted makes it two away in the inning and you move Collins to second base. Concepcion had a base hit in the first inning. It was his fifth. He is the only player on either side to have as many as five hits. That ball smothered. Now throw to third base, but not close enough to the bag to get him. Kept a run from scoring, though. Great effort by Garner. That's the fourth Cincinnati hit, and Concepcion gets his second hit today and his sixth in the series. And what an effort by Scrap Iron, and enjoy it again. Boy, I'll tell you, ball had base hit all over it. But with two outfield, no, I just have to knock the ball down, keep it from going into the outfield, and the run can't score. And alertly, he did that with an all-out effort. <laughs> he had seen fall on that ground, slide on the wet turf. Collins had to scramble like crazy to get back in, even though Madlack was off the bag. And if, if alertly, Nixon doesn't hold him up, Scrap Iron might have been able to daily but third rounding the bag. Because I got to believe Collins, when he uh, went away from second base, had thoughts about coming home on that ball. But the coach helped him, as you pointed out, and now here is Foster in the first inning hit into a force play on a great play by Foley. Boy, what a rip he had. Boy, he does. George would like to have that pitch back. He just didn't quite get around on it in, in time, but that's more or less in George's power alley. He likes that ball from the waist down. Strike one the count. Fly Levin in a situation here where he does not want to make a mistake on a hitter like Foster. Collins third, Concepcion first, two down. Strike in there on there's old Uncle Charlie again. What a beautiful pitch. Not only had great deception, but it had great location. And these are the type of pitches that Burt Blylevin is going to have to make to get out George Foster. And here it is again. Look at the bend in that river. 0-2. Oh, oh, brother. Some of the folks behind the screen were trying to help the plate umpire make up his mind. All right, Blylevin took that hot setting up outside. Oh, he got him. Beautiful breaking ball. Right three ball. Second strike out of the inning and of the game for Blylevin. A beautiful pitch and a great hitter. Shut the door on Foster in the Reds. No runs, two hits, no errors. They leave a pair. We're in the middle of the third at Three Rivers. So far, so good. Pirates, two, Reds, nothing. In the bottom of the third, Stargell, Milner, and Madlock. That might be a little look into the future. He's going to get some votes. Is he ever? And the fact that the spotlight was on our club those last two weeks and all those guys in from around the country who vote, he had to pick up some support. Strike from Norman, who came on in the second and struck out Parker in relief of Mike Lacoste. Smashed it. Look out, Al Monchek. Strike two. Willie Stargell, the Pirates' all-time home run leader. And the fans here know it, too. There's a drive.
let him sit down in that dugout. Pitch to Milner is a ball. Three to nothing, Pirates. Stargell's second home run of the playoff series. His three-run homer in the 11th inning Tuesday night won that game. Boy, are we getting some mileage out of two hits. Three runs, and we're leading three to nothing. The 1-0 to Milner. Started after it, laid off. Two balls, no strikes. That was very typical of the type of home run that Willie hits. They're just majestic. Yeah, there wasn't any doubt the minute it... The crack of the bat told you, and then one look at it going... Yeah, it was gone. John Milner hit a couple of grand slams this season, and he's having a little trouble getting his bat going in this series. He's 0 for 7. He walked the first time up today. Fouled. Back. Bench throws the mask away. Coming uh, to the edge of the track in front of the screen, and it's one away in the Pirate third. Milner popping up to Johnny Bench. That's going to bring up the Mad Dog, who walked in the first inning. Madlock batting with nobody on in front of him and one away. And Ed Ott on deck as you looked into the dugout. And there's a drive. Way back into left. That one's going. out there knowing that it takes as he takes another bow recognizing the cheers of the fans he just got all of that ball too and Freddie Norman now is not being particular gave it up to a lefty and now has given it up to a righty oh, this crowd is really buzzing now Ed Ott will be the batter two home runs in the inning one of the big moments for Ed Ott was in that great comeback at Philadelphia on a Saturday afternoon. And he took Tug McGraw to the hitting background in right center with a pirate on every base. That was one of the greatest comebacks I think I've ever had the opportunity of broadcasting. The rap on, the rap on Tug McGraw in past years has been that he hasn't been able to get the left-handers out with frequency. He doesn't throw his best pitch, which is a screwball, to left-handed hitters, and they've heard him. A drive to right, but it won't carry enough to be a grand slam until it hits the back of the drop. Oh, my. You talk about a ball that was hit. Ott just kind of took a little look. McBride just kind of turned his head around, put his back to the infield, and Tug McGraw, for the second time in a week, has served a grand slam to a left-hand hitter. And when you said that the rap on him not being able to get a left-hand hitter out consistently, well, we have put the proof of the pudding on that twice in one week. 2-2. Two -two. Pop foul. Down the right side. Dreesen outside the lane. And it's two away. Ott popping up to the first baseman. That'll bring up Garner, who started the second inning with a triple that skipped by the right fielder and was able to score on a Foley sacrifice fly. Garner has hit Cincinnati pitching to a fair well not only in this series four hits. There's a foul up here to the right side, but he hit over 380 against him during the regular season when he had 13 for 34. The 0-1. Line ride to a leaping first baseman in the side has been retired, but not before the Pirates set off the fireworks. The family is in front now. 
runs by Stargell and Madlock. Two runs, two hits, no errors, nobody left. And after three innings in game three, as the Pirates try to lock it up today, it's the Pittsburgh Pirates four, the Cincinnati Reds zip. The next three innings are sponsored in part by Tasty Cake. Cakes, pies, and cookies, all the good things wrapped up in one. And in part by Giant Eagle, bringing all the best to you. Boy, you talk about bringing all the best. What a jam-packed ball game, and we're only in the third. The Pirates leading the Cincinnati Reds 4 to nothing. The big shots in the third, home runs by Stargell and Madlock. And now we've got Burt Blylevin with that 4-0 advantage. Nelly Bryles? Certainly does. And now it's up to Burt to prove he can hold that lead. Back up what he has said before, that he's a premier pitcher. He's got the rest of the game to prove it. Well, the Bucks in a situation to win the National League Championship. Still six big innings to go. We are glad to have you with us as we bring you the action from Three River Stadium. Johnny Bench will lead off the fourth. Bench 0 for 1. He flied to left center field in the second. Be followed by Dreesen and then Knight. Turning out to be a beautiful afternoon here at Three Rivers. <laughs> In more ways than one, as soon as the sunshine came out, the Bucks exploded. Madlock. Stargell benches out, one away. Four nothing Pirates lead. We're in the top of the fourth. Totals Pirates four runs, three hits, no errors. Reds no runs, four hits, no errors. Madlock has to wait for this ball to come down, and so he times his catch, able to pick it as the ball jumps right a little bit, make a strong throw, and Johnny Bench trying for everything it was worth to beat the play out, but just those heavy legs wouldn't let him get there in time. Three and zero for one, and one for nine in the series. And as I said uh, earlier in the broadcast. One of their big guns I talked about earlier, Joe Morgan, 0 for 9 in the series. The other guy got to balance the, the right-handers were thrown at him. Dreesen not having a good series, 1 for 9. <laughs> 1 2 pitch. Struck him out. Dreesen caught looking. Y11, third strikeout, and two away in the Cincinnati fourth. This is that beautiful curveball that Burt can throw when he's really on. Had no chance. Dreesen had no chance to try and handle that ball in any way. And it was in a good spot to right in on his hands. So with two down, Pirates leading four to nothing. And Ray Knight the batter. Knight with a double in the second. And a base hit through the right side. Burt got the pitch in on him. Been able to battle it off and got the single through the right side. So Ray Knight gets his second hit of the game and his fourth hit of the series. This is in all forms of the word a true check swing single as you're going to see that bat doesn't even get all the way through. That's usually a called strike but uh, it just happened to be placed in the right area and with a slick turf Phil Garner wasn't able to make a play. No balls and two strikes on Cesar Geronimo. See, bats with Knight at first base and two down. Goodbye. Struck him out. Fly 11 with four strikeouts. He got two in the third. He's gotten two punch shots here in the fourth. And for Cincinnati, no runs, one hit. The big strikeouts of Dreesen and Geronimo. We play three and a half. Bucks lead the Reds by four, and we'll be right back. This is it. You can root the Bucks home during this half of the fourth inning, and the sky's the limit for Vincent Bekovich of Braddock, Pennsylvania. A home run is hit. It's worth $800 in our Giant Eagle sweepstakes inning. All right, Vince, let's see if we can't get you the long ball. And uh, stepping up to the checkout counter here in the fourth, Bert Blylevin, Omar Moreno, and Tim Foley. Now well, we got the long ball in the third from Stargell and Madlock. And both home runs jumped out there was no doubt about either one of them 
Why 11 0 for one. Pirates leading four to nothing, bottom of the fourth inning. Game three, and the Bucks looking to make this the deciding game of the series. Shot through the left side. This club fired up. Came out early. This crowd that had to wait 49 minutes because of rain. They were fired up from the start. Burt just gets a good pitch to hit, and it, if you throw a, a pitcher that kind of ball, even he can hit it. So Norman made a big mistake, gave Burt a fat pitch, and uh, he took advantage of it. Y11 is on. Al Monchek conferring with the Dutchman at first base. That is hit number four for the Pirates. And now for Vincent Benkovich of Braddock, Pennsylvania. Omar Moreno has walked twice. Stolen base and a run scored. Bouncer in front of the plate on the butt. Bench will fire to Morgan. And with the sacrifice going two to four, Lyle moves down to second base. Johnny Bench, the premier catchers in the National League. Does a fine job, gets that bat head right out there, drops the ball down, forces the catcher to come out of the chute and throw him out. And Bench knew that Omar was running and he really gunned the ball. Lackadaisical move on a part of Bench, Omar might beat the play. Y11 in scoring position at second base. Foley 0 for 1. And popped into right. Collins 2 away. Y11 holds at second base. The throw got up over the glove of Concepcion, but Knight backing up on the left side of the infield. Well, with Y11 at second and 2 away, the Reds' bullpen continues to work. Left-hander is Charlie Liebrandt. And the right-hander uh, might be Mar Manny Sarmiento. Parker stepping in 0 for 1. He had a sacrifice fly in the first. Norman struck out Parker to end the second. Do you recall, uh, Nelly, what the pitch happened to be? He struck him out on the same pitch that he, that he took for a ball right here. It was that breaking ball down and away right there. So now he's got uh, the advantage on Norman. Two balls, no strikes with Stargell waiting on deck. Maybe that's how he's supposed to pitch to him. Wait till he gets 2-0 and oh and then <laughs> come in like he did before to get him. And fouled off to the left. the inning with a single. He went to second on a Moreno sacrifice bunnies He's there now with two away. And uh, Dick Stello talking with Freddie Norman about going to his mouth. It might make it a three and one count. I'm not sure if he was warning him whether he told him he went and going to charge a ball. Yep, three and one. Norman and Dick Stello, second base umpire, barbering back and forth a little bit as Norman is visibly upset with the call. Norman, while on the pitching surface in that dirt area, went to his mouth to a three and one. And Parker walks. First walk issued by Norman. Pirates have two on, two away. Pitching coach Bill Fisher is going out. The Pirates and the Pirate fans standing in anticipation of Willie Stargell. <laughs> Willie Stargell with uh, four home runs during championship play. He had uh, two a couple of years ago. See, 1974, I think it was. And has had two in this championship series against the Reds. Freddie Norman needs to get out Willie Stargell. He leads off the top of the next inning. And the first pitch is fouled away. Strike one. Base hit. 
Down the right field line. Fly Levin will score. Five nothing. Parker has the green light. Relay back in will not be in time. Stargell double and the Pirates lead. Six to nothing over the Cincinnati Reds. Stargell has driven in three of the six runs. Has six RBIs in this three-game series so far against the Reds. can Willie continue to do it time after time getting that big base hit here he drives the ball between Treason and a bag down the right field line by the time Collins can retrieve it Parker has scored all the way to first and Captain Willie Stargell the guts of this ball club the glue that holds us all together our number one leader has indeed delivered again Charlie Liebrandt born in Chicago 6'4", 195 pounds. Balk has been called on the youngster, Lee Brandt, and Stargell will get third base. Left-hander brought into a pressure situation. He made the mistake, and Willie's on the front door. There it was. Yep, just a little flinch. He was going to... Uh Go into his stretch, and then he double-clutched. Good way to put it. <laughs> Milner takes ball one. We're in our jackpot inning. Stargell at third, two away. Bottom of the fourth inning, game three of the playoffs. Pirates leading six to nothing. Lee Brandt, by the way, this year was uh, eight and 14 at Indianapolis, their AAA club, and had an ERA of 2.94. He made three appearances during the regular season for the Reds. Milner, drive to right. Collins back on the ball and he'll make the grab so no home run during our jackpot inning but for our contestant Vincent Benkovic a certificate for 10 tasty cake family packs and a year's supply of daily juice products redeemable at your grocer our next giant eagle sweepstakes inning will be worth $900 and now after four innings of play ain't no stop in the box the score is the Pirates six and the Cincinnati Reds nothing so we get ready for the fifth inning. Charlie Liebrandt would be uh, due up to lead off the inning, but Rick Arbach's going to be the pinch hitter, and we've got a new left fielder, Bill Robinson. So Bill will take uh, John Milner's spot in the Pirate batting order. For Cincinnati, number 23, Rick Arbach. Rick Arbach, 0 for 1 in the series. He was used as a pinch hitter in game one Tuesday night. Arbach on the year hit 210. One home run, 12 RBIs. Burt Blylevin with the 6 0 lead. Burt with four strikeouts, and he's come with his strikeout pitch, especially in the last two innings. Madlock with a high throw, but Stargell. Fancy footwork takes care of it on the right side, and Arbach is out. One away in the fifth. Well, I think Bill just wanted to show Willie that, hey, we got to get you moving around over there a little bit. Might be a little nippy. So throws the ball off a little high, but Willie finessefully takes it off the back of the bag and artfully throws it to second. We'll go to the top of the Cincinnati batting order, Dave Collins. It seems to be the book on Dave Collins. Uh, we've seen him a lot, of, a lot in the last two games from the left side. Left side, he likes the ball down and over the plate, prefers hard stuff. Try and throw him fastballs up, as they did right there, and get your breaking stuff over with him. He's a much better hitter now than he has been in previous years because he's making more contact. Garner, backhanded stop. Goes and didn't get him. Oh, it was a close play, but Collins beat it out. Amazing thing about the play, too, is Garner really unloaded in a hurry. But Collins beat the rapid first. Garner. Go ahead. I, I was remember talking to Phil earlier in, in Cincinnati when a Detroit Tiger scout said that they would take a lot of other second basemen over Phil Garner. He demonstrates here why he feels that he's as good as anybody in the game. Demonstrates so. Again goes way in the hole and makes one of the fantastic plays of the game. Made a big play back in the third on the Concepcion ground ball. Garner prevented the ball from going out into center field and kept the Reds off the scoreboard in the third. 
instead of it being a two to one ball game at that point it stayed two nothing and the Pirates got two in the third two in the fourth and lead six to nothing Joe Morgan rumors have it that he's going to play out his option with the Reds could be playing in his last last day in a Cincinnati uniform and Burt strikes him out five strikeouts for Bly Lemon and all five have come in the last three innings now two away in the fifth the luxury about having a good lead is the fact that you can just go get him and challenge him with your best stuff and that's one of Burt's best curveballs of the game breaks it right off the table right down and into Morgan the deception of the speed enables Morgan to be way out in front good pitch by Bly Levin. Uh, Dave Concepcion six hits in the series shot from our right field camera as you look in over the shoulders of Dave Collins and Willie Stargell as Nellie Browse mentioned Willie playing off the bag and in front of the runner by the way a tip of our cap to our producer Doug Kennedy hope you're with us at the top of our broadcast as we uh, showed you the highlights of the first two games our whole production crew putting it together and so well done to give you an insight as to how we got to game three leading two games to none one ball and two strikes on Concepcion might as well take it Davey because that's one that no one can hit all right blind up and ready one two pitch and fouled off something uh, apparently popped up in it outside maybe a piece of dirt or something well the first two games of the playoffs in the National League really classic ball games Stargell of course hit the big home run in game one on Tuesday so our entire production crew able to put together those highlights for you Brad Risch from uh, our studios working with our producer there's a strikeout and Bly Levin with a half dozen strikeouts in the last three innings before the hometown crowd at Three Rivers Stadium the Bucks are looking to grab the National League flag in 79 we're halfway home and the Buccos lead the Reds six to nothing we'll be right back Mario Soto is the new pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds Mike Lacoste started Freddie Norman in the second Charlie Lee Brand in the fourth and now Mario Soto in the fifth as you take a look at his numbers and he'll be facing Bill Madlock Ed Ott, and Phil Garner Pirates leading six to nothing four times previously in the National League playoffs clubs have swept the playoffs in three games straight the Mets did it the first year of the playoffs in 69 when they took three in a row from the Atlanta Braves Madlock pops it into shallow right and Joe Morgan takes charge one away Pirates in front six to nothing in the bottom of the fifth and brings up Ed Ott scoring in the ball game the Pirates got a sacrifice fly from Parker in the first that drove in Moreno then in the second Foley sacrifice fly got Garner home in the third solo home runs by Stargell and Madlock and then in the fourth a two run double by Stargell drove in Bly Levin and Parker you know Nellie I learned something new today I was talking with a couple of the players the players pool and the shares for the end of the year determined by just the first three games of the playoffs and just the first four games of the World Series there's a line shot foul didn't know that till today that's it and, and all of these shares are voted on before the playoffs usually you'll have a team meeting if if it looks like uh, you're going to be in postseason play or finish one two or three in your division then you do have uh, the option of voting on who gets the money and what part of the money that they get as much tenant Chuck Tanner was looking on to the action. Pop left side. Concepcion going up, and he has it two away. So Ott pops up to the red shortstop, two away in the fifth inning. Chuck Tanner, third year. He has taken this club to the Eastern Division Championship, and he may be an hour, hour and a half away from a National League flag for Pittsburgh. 
He knows better than to say anything, but you can see a sparkle starting to light in his eye, knowing that any team can come back, and he's going to do anything managerially to keep that from happening. I'll tell you one thing, the close-ups of Chuck are a lot different than the close-ups we've seen of Jim Fergosi, for example, the last couple of days. And, of course, Fergosi's Angels are down two games to none to Baltimore. Game three of the American League playoffs tonight. Some might be wondering in the eventuality that we were to play Baltimore, how many players are left off the 1971 World Series teams on both sides, and there are only five. Five. There are three for us. There's Willie Stargell. There is Manny Sanguin and Bruce Keeson. All right, don't tell me the Baltimore guys. I want to okay. see if I can guess them. We've not talked about this. Belanger would be one. Jim Palmer. That's another one. There are more. No. No, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you acted like there was still one more. You said five. Okay. Ralph Salvon and Earl Weaver. <laughs> right? We want to go that far. Well, and John Hallahan and Tony Barter. Yeah, there, that's right? right. Here's the 3 1 pitch. And a full count. Nobody on, two down. Bottom of the fifth. Pirates leading six to nothing. Six nothing. Pirates lead. Payoff pitch. And skied into shallow center. Geronimo has it. Pirates are retired one, two, three for the first time in the ball game. So after five innings of play, the Pirate family has taken a six to nothing lead over the Cincinnati Reds and will be going to the sixth inning. The Reds will be sending up the middle third of their batting order. We'll be right back. Well, the Buckos are trying to prove once and for all that they are indeed number one. And uh, pointing, of course, to the World Series, the right to meet the best of the American League. Nelly was interesting the way everybody jumped into the booth there when we were having our little trivia quiz here. And uh, the Pirate Parrot who's thinking about going to the World Series performing. But we said five players, three on each, three on the Pirates and two on the, uh, the Orioles, who played for those teams in the 71 World Series. That's right. But and there's another guy who was there, too. If you didn't miss that qualification, then people would say we were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but Grant Jackson, indeed, did play for Baltimore and will be the only player that will have reverse roles, provided that we win. He will be pitching against his former team, of course, being the Pirates against the Orioles. Keep all our right. fingers crossed, and let's carry it on home. All right, all right, indeed. George Foster will be leading off the top of the sixth. Six-nothing, Pirates lead. Foster, Bench, and Dreesen. Batting for the Reds here in the top of the sixth inning. Six runs, five hits for the Pirates. No runs, six hits for the Reds. And that's what Burt wants to do. If he falls behind just the least little bit, as he did Foster there at 2-1, he can afford to challenge him. Even if Foster hits a ball out of the ballpark, we're still ahead by five, so you have to make them put the ball in play. Struck him out. Third straight strikeout for Bly Levin, his seventh strikeout, and all seven have come in the last four innings. And this is exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to challenge him. You've got to hit me now to get me out of here. Threw the ball right on by a power swinging George Foster. Bert Bly Levin. Another angle on the strikeout of Foster. Burt Blylevin, the youngest pitcher ever to take part in the American League Championship playoffs at age 19, nine years ago. He's back here at a 28 years of age in a starting role, now facing bench. Blylevin and the Bucks leading 6 to nothing over the Cincinnati Reds. I think Burt knows in the back of his mind, hey, if I do it here, I can close a lot of a lot of uh, critical mouths and saying that, you know, I can't do it, and I'm out here to do it, and he looks like he's determined to do just that. And I think he's determined to be the pitcher that walks off the mound when the game is over. Of course, he knows that he's got a very talented and qualified bunch of bullpen men behind him. Bench had a notion. And it's a strike, two and two. First base up fire. Frank Pulley went up with a right hand. Bench giving him a good double take look down there and asking him if he's completely sure about that call. Johnny's upset. Nobody on, one down.
<laughs> Ben saying there. Now that's a swing. <laughs> And a look at Mr. Frank Pulley. He was the umpire who made the call the other day, Wednesday, on the sinking liner off the bat of Garner, indicating it was a trap, not a catch. And again, as with Foster, Burt wants to make Johnny Bench put that ball in play. Challenge him with your best stuff. Johnny Bench has answered the challenge with a home run to left field. The Cincinnati Reds are on the board. It's now a 6-1 to game. Yeah, there it is, a classic confrontation. And Bench driving a 3-2 pitch deep to left. It's now 6-1. to Well, unfortunately, Burt Blylevin fell behind in the count taking it all the way full had no choice but to try and come in and challenge him this time he did not win the challenge Johnny Bench did as he has done against the Pirates in the past Bench was the winner and scores their first run with that long home run Johnny Bench up next puts Cincinnati ahead with still another blast one and two the wine and the pitch to bench. Change in the air to deep right field. That goes to Lindsay. It's a pass. He's doing it. So Johnny Bench with the home run, his first of this playoff series. Fly level off the hill. Fires to Stargell. Dreesen is out two away. By the way, a note on bench. The home run, his fifth in National League championship play. It's a good recovery by Burt. Came right back with his good pitches, settled down immediately, came in, fielded the ball cleanly, and gave Willie a good throw. That's the way to bounce back after you know you put yourself in a hole. Burt really seems to have his head on right today. Left-hander Dave Tomlin warming up in the... Cincinnati bullpen. Nobody on two down. Here's Ray Knight. Fly ball to right, and Parker on the warning track. Has it. The Reds are out of the sixth inning. Cincinnati gets one run on one hit. The home run by Johnny Bench. So the Pirates have a five-run lead. We get ready now for the bottom of the sixth inning. Bert Blylevin will lead things off, then to be followed by the top of the Pirate batting order, and we'll be coming right back to beautiful Three River Stadium after this timeout. This is it. You can root the Bucks home during this half of the sixth inning. Our Giant Eagle Championship sweepstakes inning, and our contestant is Stephen Nash of Pittsburgh. Stand by, Stephen. We have $900 in the jackpot for you if a Pirate hits a home run during the sixth inning. And pitcher Bert Blylevin gets a nice round of applause. An ovation, a standing ovation from this Free River Stadium crowd as he stands in. Pirates six, Reds one, last of the sixth. Bird helped get that big fourth inning started with a base hit when the pitcher got careless and threw one over the plate with not too much on it. Let's see if he can get something started here in the sixth. Mario Soto facing Bird Bly 11. Soto came on in the fifth, set the Pirates down one, two, three. Look at the Pirate Bat Boys, uh, Stephen Graff, closest to the camera, and Stephen Hallahan. They've worked as a tandem for the Bucks all year. And a strikeout, number one for Soto. Bly 11 out, one away. Well, if Chuck didn't want him on base, he got his wish. Just as well, just as well. Let him go in now and concentrate on the the rest of the order we have uh, coming up eight nine and one in the seventh so Bert can go in figure out exactly what what he wants to do knows that there will be a pinch hitter he can go in and start thinking about the, those possibilities Omar Moreno now batting for Stephen Nash in our jackpot inning and the fly ball into center field that Geronimo will take care of two away on the Pirates sixth 
Pirates are leading 6-1. A victory here this afternoon for the Pirates would give them the National League pennant, the championship, and the right to go to the World Series to face the best of the American League. And it could very well be that we'd have a rematch of the 71 World Series with the Pirates and the Orioles. It would start, by the way, much as the 71 World Series did, it would start in Baltimore, if that were the principles involved. Games 1 and 2 in the American League City Tuesday and Wednesday nights of next week. Games three, four, and five of the World Series next weekend in the National League City. And of course, we're hoping it's the Steel City. Center field, Concepcion out, Geronimo in, Geronimo makes the play. So no home run during our jackpot inning. But for our contestant, Stephen Nash, a certificate for 10 Tasty Cake Family Packs and a year's supply of daily juice products redeemable to grocers. Our next Giant Eagle sweepstakes inning will be worth $1,000. After six in game three of the National League Championship Series, the Pirates lead the Reds 6-1. to one. Most ball players dream about making it to the Hall of Fame. But I'd be satisfied if people just remember me as the guy with the great chewing tobacco. That's Levi Garrett, my brand. Sure, I've tried a lot of other brands in my time, but once you taste this fresh Levi Garrett flavor, you'll see why it's one of the fastest growing brands of loose leaf chewing tobacco in the country. After all, fame is a fleeting thing, but with Levi Garrett, you're always a winner. As we go to the seventh inning here, Milo Hamilton back along with Nelson Bryles. With this total board, the Pirates 6 5 0 oh, with Blylevin. Home runs by Stargell and Madlock. The Reds are 1 7 0. Oh, their run coming on a bench homer. And they have used Lacoste, Norman, Lee Brandt, and Soto. And Spillman is already on deck. He'll be a pinch hitter after Geronimo leads it off. So Blylevin is ready. The 2 1. Bouncer, that's going to make it up the middle. Lead off single in the seventh. And that just might get our bullpen stirring. Even though you got the five run lead, it is the seventh inning. You've got everybody ready down there. And they might start to heat up. In fact, Don Robinson's already taken off his jacket. I asked him on the pregame on radio if he was ready. Nellie asked him on the pregame on TV if he was ready. We both got an unqualified, you betcha. He said, hey, we got all winter to rest. He said, give me the ball. I'm ready anytime. Spillman is the pinch hitter. Harry Spillman hit 214 for the year. No homers and five RBI. There's a fly ball into right that Parker will move to his right and grab. And it's one away. So Spillman jumped on the first pitch. That surprises me a little. On a cooler day, now the players, this hasn't happened gradually. The cool weather came in all of a sudden. For a guy to come off of a bench and not even look at a pitch, against a guy who's seemingly rolling along and they look at a bullpen you see Robinson the right hander and Jackson the lefty jumping on the first pitch didn't even give himself a chance really to get up there well it's not only not giving himself a chance but his club is still five runs down and his runs really don't mean all that much so he wants to try and get on he got a pitch he I guess he thought he could hit went ahead and, and ripped at it but lots of the ball in the air for the easy out. Collins the batter he's two four three well we saw a real conclusive bit of evidence that he can run but that infield hit he beat out he can fly shows bunt there but we're appealing third base umpire says yes so it goes on the board as a strike bouncer short let's make it two flip one fire two safe there's Collins' speed again. There's been a lot of hitters. That would have been a DP, Nelly. Certainly was. Even though he hit the ball off the end of the bat, right at Foley. Foley again making sure with this type of lead, making sure gives a nice feed, and, and Garner turns the ball well, but the speed of Collins is just able to beat the double play. Look at Scraps evade that runner and go right with that good strong throw right on target to Stargell, right where he can handle it. Again, but, 
they didn't really have to turn it that fast. They just made sure that they got the lead runner and then go ahead and follow through, see if you can't nip him. All right, Collins first, two down, Morgan the batter. Ball, 1-0. and oh. Morgan, and we talked about him during the long delay, Nellie. They needed him to do something today. He's 0 for 3 and 0 for 10 in the series. Right at the captain. Sides retired. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. Seventh inning stretch time. The fans are starting to feel it now. We have played into the middle of the seventh at Three Rivers, and it's the Pittsburgh Pirates six, the Reds one. Well, with the theme of the Pirate Clubhouse, we are family in the background. We'll remind you that there are plenty of good general admission seats remaining for the World Series to be held here in Pittsburgh. Begins here a week from tonight, the 12th at 8.30. We'll continue Saturday, October 13th at 1 in the afternoon and on Sunday, October 14th at 4.30. Tickets are going fast, so you stop by the Pirate Ticket Office right here at Three Rivers Stadium. That's the only place you can pick them up. They've got a new pitcher on the mound, Tomlin. There is Bob Housem, who built the Cincinnati dynasty for the 70s, and the man in the dark coat in the middle. And on the extreme left is Dick Wagner, the president head of the Reds. They don't have a heck of a lot to smile about today. No, there isn't, and they thought maybe coming back in here, where they've had such good luck this past season, they might be able to get on the start today, but it just hasn't been possible so far as... The Pirate hitters have definitely dominated, and Bert Blylevin is living up to his promise. He said, I can do the job, and he's certainly done it so far. And the story again has been holding the Reds down. They got two in the first, two in the second, and only one here today. That's doing a job on a club that can score. It certainly has been, and of course, disappointment for Cincinnati is that a couple of their big boys haven't been able to do too much, and especially today, Concepcion, just one base hit. Morgan doesn't have any, and neither does Dreesen. All right, Tomlin's pitch to Parker as a swinging strike. And as the family theme song played, the family, the wives of the Pirate players, were up on the dugout roof. High chop, shortstop won't be able to get it. And it'll be a base hit for Parker, his first hit today, his fourth hit in the series. So the Cobra leads it off with a single against the left-hander, Dave Tamlin. And here comes Stargell, and he'll get another standing ovation. Yeah, give it to him, give it to him. Here was that home run earlier today that went way up in the club level in right field. That was in the third inning, and in the fourth inning, he had a two-run double. The captain leading the way again. Just showing again their appreciation of how much the fans and Pittsburgh, everybody admires, loves Willie Stargell, knows what he stands for. Runner going. Benches throw will not be in time. that far ahead that we can't play aggressive baseball. Parker takes off when Tomlin isn't paying all that much attention to him and just beats the tag of Davy Concepcion. Looks like he had a pretty good jump and he had nowhere but second base on his mind. All right, a payoff is due to Stargell with Parker at second and nobody out. It's check swing foul left side. Tanner's philosophy is, now if this were back in June maybe and you're going to have to play these guys ten more times, you wouldn't be rubbing any salt in any wound, but at the same time, Tanner's philosophy is, and there's the skipper. Hey, don't get on us when we use our running game late in a game. Fouled off, and Bench hangs on. But the crowd doesn't care. They're going to let him hear it again. Tanner talks about 
hey, when somebody's beaten you eight to one and one of their big guys steps up in the eighth inning and hits one out of the park, nobody says anything. Our running game is as much a part of our attack as the home run is for some other clubs. Well, that's right. We have to use everything that we have. And during the season, how many times do we come back? You never know when that extra run might be the one that when the wins a ball game. A pop for Robinson. The first pitch he looked at, he popped up the bench. So it's two away. Robinson making his first appearance at the plate. He had come in in the fifth inning. Johnny McNamara's got to be realizing that numbers are running out on him. Batter is Bill Madlock. He walked in the first, hit a line drive homer to left in the third. In the fifth inning, he popped up to the second baseman. He won't get a chance here with a left-hand batter due and a base open. They'll walk him. has fly to left, popped to first, and popped to short. 0 for 3 today. Madlock ended up down at first for Al Monchek. Greet Seaman. Chuck Tanner, and I know his mother is watching in the hospital up in Newcastle today. And I know if they settle this thing today, that'll make her day brighter. There's one off the end of the bat toward night at third. He will throw to Dreesen. Odd is out, and so are the Pirates. No runs, one hit. No errors, a walk, two left. We've played seven. Two more miles to go in order to get the Pirates into the World Series for 79. Here's the score. Pirates six, Reds one. Bly Levin's gone the first seven against five Cincinnati pitchers. Lacoste, Norman, Lee Brant, Soto, and Tomlin. We've got Robinson and Jackson already working in the bullpen. Chuck Tanner doesn't want anything to go wrong now. And a strike to the leadoff batter Concepcion, who is two for three. Strike two. Got to be playing countdown now. Countdown, six outs to go. A little high with a fastball, and it's one and two. Bly Levin has struck out seven, hasn't walked anybody. Has given up only the one run, a home run by Bench in the sixth inning. Just missed going into the left field pavilion. Bly Levin's had the good support behind him, both with the gloves and with the bats today. And he's blended right into it with a good pitching job. Strike three call. Eight strikeouts and brings up Foster. Yes, sir. Davey had to be guessing right here. He had to be looking for that hook that he's had going for him all day. Took that fastball right across the chest for the strikeout. And we've got five to go, Milo. We're now down to five. Foster today is 0 for 3. Struck out the last two times. Fly 11 against the Braves. Struck out six twice. Against the Cubs, four twice. Is high against the Reds previously this year. Look at the oddity of that. Three appearances struck out five each time. In four outings against them now, 23 strikeouts against the Reds this year. So he's got one coming as far as a win. Off speed, high pop right side. Stargell's play to make. Squeeze it, Captain Willie, and it's two away. He struck out eight Dodgers on the 29th of August. That was in Los Angeles. That's five down, four to go. He struck out nine Expos on the 27th of July in the second game of a doubleheader. His high against uh, the Mets was eight. Six against the Phillies, four against the Cardinals, seven the Padres. Giants eight was his high, so nine was the high. He's got a chance to tie it for the year. High pop. Geiner's play to make in shallow right center, and it's three up and three down. Three to go, number three. Now the crowd is really starting to count it. 
We're going to go to the bottom of the eighth inning, working that hometown magic with the Pirates six and the Reds one. What is it? Meatloaf sandwich and a light. Gentlemen, as we all know and appreciate, light has one third less calories than a regular beer, and it's less filling. But the best thing is, it tastes great. Less filling. By your oh, this is my broccoli. That's my peas. What's wrong with you guys? Hey, Bubba, you want the peas? Ooh. Hey, you gonna eat all that? Just showing off. Gentlemen, in closing, I'd like to think I speak for all of us, but I say if it wasn't for light, I wouldn't be where I am today. Hey, you performed! Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. We're going to the bottom of the eighth. The Pirates are in front by five. Bill Garner's gonna get a big hand as he steps in. today has had a triple in three trips. He's had four hits in the series. Looking ahead to their ninth inning, they'll have Dreesen, Knight, and Geronimo. That's going to be in the right center for a base hit. Geiner gets his second hit of this game. It's his fifth hit in the series. And that ties Stargell for five hits. That's the second hit off Tommen, and here's another hand for Blylevin. Blylevin with a good chance to not only win it, but to get a root job here today, the way he's pitching. Geiner gets back at first. Blylevin has had one for three. In fact, he singled in the fourth and scored on a Stargell double. Another throw over, but Scraps was barely off the bag. Still no count to Blylevin. Bunts it toward the mound. Only play is the first base. Tomlin to Morgan, one to four. Sacrifice accomplished. We'll go to the top of the order as you see Lila would make a perfect bunt here Nelly certainly does this is something that pitchers work on a long time is able to get a good pitch lay it down not running it out very hard knowing that he's got the all-important top of the ninth coming up sacrifices Garner to second base Moreno's done his job in that leadoff spot he walked a couple times stole a base sacrifice the only time but they got him with no damage was in the sixth inning when he flied out to center field. Ball one. Hard to pay off is due on the antelope. Runner at second, Garner one down, eighth inning. Pirates leading by five in a six to one game. Right at night, looks Garner back, throws to Dreesen. Omar is out, and it's two away in the bottom of the eighth inning. That'll bring up Tim Foley as you look at Geiner and Morgan chatting. Here it is again on the bouncer. Omar trying to go the other way as he's done a lot this season. It's the ball right at Ray Knight who checks Garner, throws out to speedy Omar Moreno. And before Foley's going to get a chance to bat, John McNamara is on his way out. Hume, who has been their ace out of the bullpen in the final third of the season, has been throwing, and he's going to go for him. So Tom Hume, who served up the three-run homer to Stargell in the opening game, is going to be brought on here with the right-hand batting Foley do. Fly ball out into left center. Geronimo will run under it. Oh, he dropped the ball! Geronimo coasted over. Hey, I got it. No problem. And whoops, 
right off the end of his glove. And of course, in, in doing so, Garner scores that insurance run, as you can see, right off the tip of his glove. He knew he had the ball, but just took it a little bit for granted, as you can almost never do any ball in this game. We got that big insurance run, and we have another runner in scoring position in the form of Tim Foley. All right, Parker, the batter, facing the right-hander Hume. They haven't scored that play yet. Now they have. It's an error. I don't know what took them so long. It was so obvious. There's a bouncer right side. Morgan over, grabs, throws against the grain, and gets Parker, and the side's retired. Good play by Morgan. But the Pirates get a run and are only three outs away from going to the World Series. One run, one hit, one big error on Geronimo, one man left. And so here we go. Blylevin with a chance to put us in the driver's seat. We'll go to the ninth inning with a score. Pirates seven and the Reds one. Well, the whole crowd is up. They're going to count it down. As we go to the ninth inning for the Cincinnati Reds, it will be Dan Dreesen, Ray Knight, and Cesar Geronimo against the right-hander Burt Blylevin. Now Tacovi is in the bullpen with Jackson. Ball one. Dreesen's 0 for 3 today, 1 for 11 in the series. Bouncer right side, Stargell fair ball, flip to fly 11, one away in the night. Stargell way back in the bag, protecting that line and just letting the ball come right to him. Knew that he had time. Fly 11 did his job, got to the bag for the toss, and it's one away. Two more outs is what we need. Knight, who's had a double, a single, and a fly ball to right. He's two for three. Geronimo is on deck. Fly 11 has gone all the way against six Cincinnati pitchers. Fly 11 has bent maybe a little on a couple of occasions, but he has not broken. He's pitched a strong, steady ball game. Struck out eight. Walk nobody. Ball one tonight. They've been given permission, as I'm sure you can see, to go to their hand, keep it warm. Steve Reich, one ball, one strike. Chuck Tanner not ready to burst that bubble yet. But wait till he gets in that clubhouse and he'll be bursting the bubbly. One, one. Steve right one and two. You can bet that wide smile will go ear to ear from manager Chuck Tanner. He's never been here before, and his coaches, 32 years in the game, never been in this situation before. Bouncer third. Madlock will fire two away. that out he wants that complete game victory the one that will put the Pirates into the World Series he is strung right now tighter than a banjo string his heart is pumping I know I've been there you know that that heart is pounding in that chest he know what he has strike oh and one Bert knows in the back of his mind there certainly ain't no stopping me now one ball and one strike. Boy, he's letting it go. No sense waiting for it. He won't have to pitch all next Wednesday or Thursday. Now we're down to a strike. Outside, two and two. crowd is absolutely ready to tear three rivers down 2-2 two -two pitch check swing foul up into the seats on the left side it ends the way it is now look yeah yeah he's finally decided it's time to go into that charming smile of his oh he did a great job 
not manage in this club. The crowd pulling for Kyle Evans to end it. Nobody on. Two away. Ninth inning. It's yeah. over. Celebration with Elliot, Eddie Alexander, and John Sanders. Let's go to the Pirate Clubhouse. Eddie Alexander, along with John Sanders and John, I want to tell you something. We're going to try to get Bill Madlock over here again. We just had Bill a second ago, but the National League champions, the Pittsburgh Pirates, 1979, and it looks like a rematch of 1971 with Baltimore, depending on whether they can beat California or not. Yeah, I just remember one thing that was said before this ball game started. We're going to get him over here in a minute. Burt Blylevin said before the ball game, he hoped he was the one jumping up and down on the mound at the end of the ball game, and he was. And we're talking about Burt Blylevin as Chuck Tanner comes in. John, looky here, Chuck. Congratulations. Oh, thanks a lot. What a great bunch of men we have. They all contributed. It's just been a fantastic year, and now we're in the World Series, and we still have one more thing to do, and we'll work at it and give it all we have. And I said earlier, I'd have to say this, that, and I really mean it sincerely. The good Lord helped us. Uh, he was with us all the way, and everything worked just right for us. We had a fellowship of Christian athletes meeting before the game. It was just terrific. <laughs> Did you see the wives dancing on top of the Yeah, uh, I, I thought that was great. I loved it. Uh, John, who do you have over there? Congratulations again, Skipper. This is Phil Geiner, who in the third inning of this ballgame made a heck of a play to cut off a run, and I think that one play, I remember that play, and I know you remember that play, too. 
Well, at that situation, it was a tight ball game, and we couldn't afford to let them get something on the board because it might give them a little breathing room and it might give them a little courage. So we had to keep them down. So I was going to try to catch that ball no matter what. Yeah, I remember what you said Sunday. After we won it, you said, this is my biggest thrill in baseball. That was Sunday. This is well, Friday. This, it keeps getting bigger, John. It keeps getting bigger and better. Terrific game. Great series. Let's go Thank get them. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. John, here he is. Tim Foley. Come in the middle, Tim. Congratulations, big guy. Thank you. It's great. Oh, man. It's just great. Great feeling. You know, it's it's unbelievable. We worked hard. We battled. We got some great pitching, and we won. We Let won. me ask you something. Did you see the wives all congregating on top of the uh, dugout? I, told, I went to Bird after they were dancing, and I said, Bird, I said, uh, if you were going to lose this game before, I said, you can't now because we can't come out here tomorrow. Now, remember, he just said something. John Sanders just said something to Garner about saying last week, hey, that was my biggest moment. It keeps getting bigger, doesn't it? It's unbelievable. You know, it's just we battle from day to day, get better and better, and it's just more fun every day. One of my MVPs in the family, Tim Foley, and look at this scene over here with Burb Levin and the captain. Captain, of course, just voted the most valuable player of the playoff series, but he don't want to talk about that because family was on top of the locker room today. Well, Eddie. If I received the award, I'm very warm and moved by. And if I could chop it up in 25 pieces, that's the way it should be because it's been a total team effort all year. I'm just so happy that I'm part of this ball club and hopefully we can just go to Baltimore and and do the things we've been doing all year. Look at this right here. What is Willie this? Jr. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> we are family. Yes, indeed. That's exactly what it is right here. Bert, let's get you in for just a second. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, it's flying. Bert, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. I thank the good Lord for everybody being healthy this year and uh, got a tremendous year. Just one pitch away from a shutout, but it doesn't matter, does it? No, not with a 6 nothing lead. You know, you just got a rear back and challenge, but I didn't want to walk anybody. And, it turned out super. I wore my Sunday go to meet and suit, but it doesn't look like it's going to last long. Oh, right? <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, Bert, one more thing. Hey, Bert, before the ball game, you said you wanted to be the guy jumping up and down on the mound at the end of the ball game, and you did. What does it really mean to you after oh. your years in the major leagues to get this opportunity? It's quite a thrill. You know, when, I, when Bench hit that home run, it was 6-1. to one, I told myself, rare back throw the ball because I want to be out here in the ninth inning and uh, when I struck out Geronimo I saw Otter jump and I jumped and it's <laughs> super feeling I haven't felt that good since 1969. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eddie as you pointed out it looks like we could be going back to Baltimore That's of course right. that Candy, ball game Candy. is tonight Candy. and we'll see what happens out Candy. there but right now I think the here. feeling in the locker room here let's take a look at this we'll get the guys. trophy if we can let's take a look at this trophy for just a moment. this is the trophy and this is the first year for the Warren Giles trophy that goes to the winning team of the National League. And this year it's the Pittsburgh Pirates as we get Betty ready to go back to the World Series for the first time since 1971. And I think, Ed, I don't know, you and I were both here on Sunday when they wrapped it up during the, uh, the regular season. A little bit different atmosphere. They're excited, they're happy, but it's, you know, it's not quite the same, would you say? I would say that uh, it's a little more subdued because of the fact they've got over the shock now of being in the playoffs. Now they're starting to look ahead to the ultimate goal at the end of the rainbow, which is perhaps a world championship. And I think that's the one of the reasons why they're taking it a little calmer, even though they still have a champagne bottle in their hand. Yes, they do. <laughs> A terrific victory. The final score here today was 7-1. to one. We hope you've enjoyed the locker room because we've enjoyed being here all the regular season, and we've got the third season to go. That's the World Series coming up, Eddie. Quick note, though. Milo Hamilton. Milo Hamilton, come over for just a second before we wrap it up because it appears the way the rules are this year on radio and television that that was your last game of the season. Well, evidently, uh, it's kind of uh, a downer. Uh, it's hard to believe, I suppose, with all the excitement, but uh, I'm so happy for this club, for the Galbraiths and Pete Peterson and Chuck Tanner and all the players and all the coaches and for the fans, but uh, to know that uh, it was my last game, uh, it just uh, is, is, I don't mean ever, but this season, because somewhere along the line, somebody decided that the local announcers weren't going to do the World Series this year, and I, that is really, uh, that's tough to take. It is tough to take, and I know it's tough for you to talk about it also. And let's bring in Nelly for just a moment because he was your sidekick in crime whenever there was television. And Nelly, uh, your last game of the season, but boy, did the family have fun today. Boy, I certainly did, and to, to be a player and participate in it is one thing, and then 
your first year announcing you end up uh, getting in a, in a pennant race. Uh, it's exciting on both ends, and I'm really proud to be part of this package. I just think that it wouldn't have been fair if we couldn't have got the announcers who have really helped to bring this family to its ultimate goal right here. Eddie Alexander along with John Sanders, Milo Hamilton, Nellie Bryles, and Lanny for Terry up in the booth probably still. We're going back to you. You know, a lot of people think Billy and I argue all the time. Actually, we agree on just about everything, right, Bill? Yeah, you betcha, you, George. We even drink the same beer. Light beer from Miller's. Light's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and it's less filling. And the best thing is, it tastes so great. No, George, the best thing is less filling. No, Bill, it tastes great. Less filling, George. Billy, it tastes great. Less filling, George. Billy? Yeah, George. You're hired. Not again. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Did I say hired? And very appropriately, in the last game, we came home and we saw on your, on the top of your dugout, the family. On the top of theirs, the Cincinnati Reds, and what a tribute there. Yeah, it was a very, very good feeling to see everybody so happy here today. We come here, we wanted to try to wrap it up, they wanted to go any further, and it was a thrill to see the wives getting out, just getting down and booking a little bit. I still got chills when I think of the Grand Slam against the Philadelphia Phillies. What a what a, what a big hit for your, your season, of course, the, one of the cappers for the whole season. Well, that might have got everybody started, because we were a little down at one time. We got a little tired physically, and we come back, and I got, the coach was 4 for 4 and I pinched it and got lucky and hit a grand slam, and uh, I seemed to get everybody started, and we just took it from there and just went on in. Yes, indeed. Thank you, John. Right. John, come on in just a moment and talk with uh, Jim Bibby, because... Uh, Thank you, Eddie. I, I remember how happy you were oh, just last Sunday. You've got to be every bit as happy or I happier what, now. I think I went past that little <laughs> interval that time. I'm even more happier now than I was last Sunday. You talked at that time about how long you've been working just to get to this point. Is there any way that you can describe the feeling you have knowing that you've got the World Series ahead of you? i tell you what, you know, like uh, when I pitched my no-hitter in uh, 73 against Oakland, you know, I thought that was got to be one of the best feelings I've had in, the, in the, my major league career. But, hey, it doesn't even compare to what we did today and what we are headed forward to.